Hey everybody, it's James Vagley here. Welcome to another episode of the MBA podcast. And uh, mortgage brokers, acceleration, what we're here to do, Ash. Uh, how are you today, my friend? My energy is good. I'm good. And looking forward to today, James. How are you? I'm good. My energy is good. Listeners, if you don't get the uh, reference, you'll have to listen to last week's episode where we talked about the energy map. Uh, but this week, episode 186, we're here to talk about two concepts uh, that we've uh, shared with our members some time ago. We wanted to bring those to you guys as well in the personal productivity, productivity hacks uh, theme that we've got going on this month in May. Uh, Ash, we're here to talk about Magic Minute and Mental Fartlek. Uh, I like it because it sounds funny, uh, but it's completely legitimate and I'm probably offending somebody because probably their surname or something. So like, let's put all the disclaimers and stuff aside. But I'll let you introduce these two concepts, um, what they are, how they link together, how to do them uh, so that our listeners can get another productivity hack under their belt. Let's get into it. Good one. Yeah, thanks, James. Look, the, these two concepts are, are pretty simple, uh, but like most things in life, um, simple doesn't always mean easy, but these are really, really powerful. So let's start with the magic minute, which is essentially just to explain a little bit for, for why it's important or to why it's important is, and I think particularly in our mortgage broking industry, you know, a lot of mental energy, a lot of physical energy, a lot of stress and anxiety and worry gets consumed thinking about particularly conversations you've got to have with prospects, clients, uh, lenders, um, can be staff, uh, these sorts of things, we, it consumes a lot of our mental energy. So we're talking about how to manage and conserve and focus your energy. So this magic minute was something I uh, evolved from elsewhere. It was a concept introduced to me many years ago by um, a, a business coach. And essentially what it means is in your, in your approach to having these conversations, instead of spending all your time worrying, thinking, stressing, uh, catastrophizing, you know, going through that process, we put all that aside and we commit to a magic minute before the conversations. So it's allocating one minute before you get on the phone, walk into the room, get on the Zoom, whatever it happens to be. And in that magic minute, the essence of that is to focus your mind and energy on that conversation. And I generally, and often the conversations that stress us are the ones that potentially have a, not negative news, but there might be confrontation, there might be conflict, there might be a deal that needs turning around, there might be a, a client that you need to speak to, that you're having trouble influencing and, and converting. All, all of those things. So instead of approaching it with this strung out mind where you've been stressing about it, save one minute. And this is what I do. I just get up off my feet and I close my eyes and I go into this sort of meditative state where I'm focused on finding one thing to love about the client. I have in my mind, no matter what, I'm thinking something that I love about this client I love the energy they're bringing. Um, if it's a lender that's declined a deal, I love that they're prepared to speak their mind. You know, things like that, you'd be amazed. And I certainly have proven it to myself and many people I've taught this to. If you practice this magic minute, it has a transformative effect on the energy you bring to the call, right? So it has this dual effect, James, of number one, it allows you to adopt a process that you can resist or, or deal with the worrying thoughts that come into your head about upcoming conversations and say, right, I'm not going to worry about that now when you're speaking to yourself. I'll deal with that in my magic minute. That has that alone has a transformative effect on uh, conserving and focusing your energy. And secondarily, it totally transforms the energy you bring to the call. And, and, for example, if you're speaking to a prospect who you're not sure about getting the business from or a referral partner that you're trying to build a relationship with, there's a couple of things I'd be thinking. One would be one thing to love and really focus on that one thing that you love, that it could be where they live, their family, their business, something, right? Something. And then if it's somebody you're wanting to influence, I always imagine in my mind 
them saying yes to whatever it is that I'm proposing. I just think about that over and over and over. And in my mind, I go into the call loving them and already believing that they've accepted what I'm proposing. It's, uh, it, I guess, yeah, this sort of goes back to the, um, you go in there with a positive expectation, right? And when you have a positive focus and positive expectation, your body language, your communication, everything shifts and changes because it's you start looking for the good instead of the negative. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things that happen on a mental and you know unconscious level when you do this process. Yeah, it's very powerful, James. And we don't want to overthink it and and we don't want to try and think of 10 things. That magic minute is really about just giving yourself one minute to really get focused in on the upcoming conversation. Because I think if you don't do this, what happens is you've got these things coming up. They're in the back of your mind, troubling you, concerning you, um, occurring to, to you in the potentially the days, hours and minutes leading up. And what happens is, guess what energy you bring to the call if you don't have a circuit breaker? Baggage. Right? You bring the baggage, you bring all the troubled thoughts, you bring everything else that's going on in your life and business to the call. So this is a really important circuit breaker to intervene in all that energy and bring your love and positive energy. Now that sounds a bit woo-woo, but it's not. It's so, so important to intervene in that energy and bring this energy. It makes all the difference. Oh, I love it. And I, I kind of forgot about the fact that by doing this, it's not just to think about something positive so you show up with positive focus, but yeah, you're by also doing that, you're removing everything else that's going on in your mind. Uh, the, the five files, the other things, what you go to buy for dinner, everything, you know, right. is going into that call. And I was just going to ask you, like, uh, before we move on to the second part, and that's, it, it sort of seems like this could work for lots of things, um, you know, whether, as you say, it's often for before a meeting or a contact or communication. Have you tried it in lots of other ways? Like if you tried it with family or friends, if you tried it when you're sitting down to work on a project, you're like, oh, this project, I don't know about this, this, this task sounds really hard. Does it work by sitting there and getting clear and thinking about that task? And one thing you love about, you know, doing this task, I mean, sure would it work in all, yeah? Oh, yes. Don't tell my family I've tried it on them, though, because I don't want them to, uh, you know, to give away my trade secrets. Um, no, it's definitely it's it's such a great personal energy hack that you can bring to any situation. You can use this in sport like this is a you can use this if you've got to do public speaking. You can use this in so many different ways to deal with all of those crowding thoughts that get in your head about everything else. But if you just schedule in your mind, and some people call this scheduling, right? Or mental scheduling, like schedule in your mind. No, I don't need to think about that now. I'm going to think about that focused for 60 seconds before the event. Your mind just releases it, the stress, knowing that you've got it scheduled in for later. So it, it works across all domains of life where you're required to bring your best self and energy to a process. And you know, you don't want to bring everything else with you. It's amazing the difference. I just encourage everybody to try and practice this and just have it in your mind. Write it on a piece of paper. In fact, I will give away another little secret here, James. It's not here now, but for quite a few years, I, I had in black marker pen written on my laptop in front of me, right? Something to love and yes, yes, yes. I had those. Mm. So every time I was speaking to someone on Zoom or the phone, I looked at these reminders, something to love. Yes, yes, yes. That's a very smart hack. Sometimes it's the most simple things that are the most powerful. That one's really cool, uh, the magic minute. And we, we should be uh, baking this into everything we do. Um, uh, you know, Our listeners, for example, if you're about to have a conversation with your team, like do this all the time. So... For those of us, that, for those of you that have followed us for a while, and you know, when we say things like, you know, when you're working on your projects or your game plan or your sprint sessions, the focus time, yeah, before any exercise or before any task or any meeting, like you should be baking in uh, this reset, you know, magic minute 
to make sure you get the most out of that conversation, bring your best self. And uh, yeah, I, I really love that. I, I can say, Ash, I haven't actually installed this one and I've heard you uh, teach it a number of times and I think it should be written on my post-it wall as well. And uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you know how I go. Uh, good to hear, James. And look, uh, before I move on to mental fartlek, I'll just uh, mention to everybody, if you end up working with us here at Broker Ideas Group and you work with me, you can be guaranteed that I'm doing a magic minute every time before we speak. Every time. Yep. Um, there you go. Secret hack before big advice, before game plans, magic minute for every person. Love just it. In nature for me now. So mental cool. fart leak, right? So people are going, what the heck is mental fart leak? If anybody's um, uh, been a runner, particularly if you've done a marathon or you've done any training, particularly for endurance running, you might have heard the term fart leak. It's an athletic term that relates to what's called interval training, right? Interval training is um, bursts of high energy interspersed with periods of rest rather than one elongated period of high energy. So, for example, instead of, uh, you know, we're running for 2,000 metres, you might run 400 metres, walk 100 metres, run 400 metres, walk 100 metres. This has been proven to intensify and accelerate your attainment of fitness and improve your aerobic fitness and muscle fitness. So it's something I learned from a friend of mine, a, a guy called Steve Monaghetti. People might have heard of him. He's a, a very well-known marathon runner who's from my hometown here in regional Victoria. So he has taught and, and used this technique his entire running life. It's worked pretty well for him, a few Olympic medals and Commonwealth Games medals. And I thought to myself, yeah, that actually applies to, in many ways, the way I tend to approach getting work done and managing my energy during the day. So I coined this term mental fartlek, which really is the same concept just applied to using or using that approach to how you manage your focus. So for me, James, I tend to max out at high focus at about 15 minutes, right? Even if I'm on this, you know, on a call or doing something for an hour, that's fine, but I will have waves of in and out of focus. Um, but high focus is about 10 to 15 minutes. Most people, it's about 20 to 25 minutes. My periods of heightened focus are shorter than most people. So what this means is instead of trying to focus for an hour, you focus for 10 or 15 minutes and step away and have a rest. Give your mind a rest so the battery can quickly top up again. That's the sort of mental picture I'd want everyone to have. Instead of running your battery down to empty and continuing on, before it gets to empty, step away, have a walk around, take a breath, do whatever you need to do. And it's amazing how quickly that focus battery tops itself back up and then come back in and give yourself another 10 to 20 minutes of focus. So it's interval training for the mind, if you like. Interval training for the mind. I like that. So how much time are you uh, having off when you say, okay, if it's for you, it's 15 minutes. I guess the, the, there's two questions. How do, do our listeners know if they're at a 15 minute or more like a 20, 25 minute? And then is it different the amount of time off that takes you to recharge? Some people might literally just a minute stand up, stretch the legs, have a quick stretch, sit back down, or some people, you might need a five-minute break, get yeah, some fresh air. How does that work? It is contextual. Um, look, depending on what we're doing, like I can walk away and in one minute, I, I can do a quick refresh. Generally, when I'm on my own and there's no rush, five minutes, sometimes 10 minutes, I would rather do three periods of 15-minute focus interspersed with 20 minutes or, you know, um, 30 minutes, I guess, 20 to 30 minutes of rest where I close my eyes, have a walk, um, do whatever I need to do to pop the battery up. I'll get more done. And I've ch I challenge all my uh, friends who work in the uh, workplace, working for other people, that I'll get more done in three, lots of 15 minutes spread over two or three hours than they could do in the same two or three hours without a break every time. And I've, I've proven that many times that uh, it's just the way it is, right? So this all is one of these energy hacks that you should give yourself permission to do. Like as long as you're not 
in the middle of a client interview, right? But it might be working on files. It might be trying to write um, some content or you know, whatever it happens to be that requires real focus of mind. When you find your mind drifting a bit, that's probably when you need a break, right? And that's to your question, James, whether that's 10 minutes, 15, 20, 25. I mean, I have friends amazingly who seem to be able to focus for 30 or 40 minutes just my son's like that he can focus for an hour without lifting his head i don't know how he does it maybe because he's young not sure me 15 minutes and i need to get up and walk around stare off into space you know whatever it happens to be it's okay to do that it actually tops the battery back up so just as it does for your body your lungs and your blood supply when you do it physically in training the same thing works for your mind. It quickly tops the battery back up and you're ready to go again. So whether it's five mm. minutes or one minute, it doesn't really matter. Just as long as you do the process for a minute or two, you should be fine. Yeah, I love this. Um, I want to extend a little further for our listeners because one thing you mentioned was the word permission to do it. And as with a lot of personal hacks and productivity hacks they're pretty much against like a 180 it's like flicking the switch against what every other person does you know like most people sit there nine to five plugging away you know they don't do these things so i guess just extending on that because it is quite different the default is still mentally but how could i possibly get more done in by doing 15 minutes on 15 minutes off every hour than sitting there. And the argument, I know a lot of our listeners who are under the pump, files building up, emails building up, there's a lot to do. So the danger is when we're at 100% capacity or even more to go, but I've just got so much to do. I just have to be in the chair between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. just, just trying to keep up. Mm. And as opposed to going, well, no, I'm actually going to work between 10 and 4 like you when you're already at capacity it's very difficult to mentally go i'm going to just work between 10 and 4 like as you said i can probably guarantee working between 10 and 4 you get more done between 8 and 8 like how do how do our listeners who are probably most likely in that boat where they work too long and they don't give themselves breaks because they've got so much to do how do they begin to trust the fact that if you work less, you actually get more done. Because I think a lot of people don't actually believe that to be true. And so they don't give themselves permission to try. Yeah, it's a really good question. And we're all different, James. So there is no one size fits all. However, what I will say is that you, you, the starting point is to really understand what requires high focus. Like nobody can or should or would be able to focus from eight to eight or even nine to five. That's impossible. That's why traditionally we get a lunch break and a tea break, right? <laughs> Ostensibly, so you can go away and have a rest and come back ready to go again. So it's almost baked in. This sort of fart lek is almost baked into the traditional um, office workday. Um, not that I'm sure that it was there for those reasons. Perhaps, perhaps not. What I'm saying is, is, Understand what requires your high focus, right? Those are the things you need to have regular little breaks from. If it's something that requires low focus, such as, um, I, I don't know, you could be, um, you know, filling out newsletters or signing newsletters. I don't know. I was speaking to a client yesterday who sends out, you know, a couple of hundred newsletters a month and every single one of them is handwritten. She still does handwritten newsletters and handwritten envelopes to her customers and she gets a, a team to help her. She doesn't hand write every single one, but she does a lot of it herself and signs everyone and writes the envelopes for every single one every month. Now you could argue, geez, that's a waste of time for her. It's not because it works. Her customers love it. But the point of it is signing it and filling out the envelopes is a low focus activity. You know, I, I could do that for an hour with my, it's like white line fever, James and listeners, you know, when you're driving, everybody that's listening, this has probably learnt to drive a car, right? Certain things require high focus. You're on the highway, there's traffic going everywhere, and you're doing 100 kilometres an hour, 
that is absolute high focus. You are tuned in to every little movement around you. We all know that's mentally tiring as opposed to being out on a highway where you might not see another car for a hundred kilometers. You go into white line fever, almost unconscious level of driving where your focus drops right away, but you're still doing enough focus to be safe. I hope that makes sense. It's like that with the work day to me. Is there certain things that needs the seatbelt on, eyes on the road, hands on the wheel, 100% focus. Have your little breaks. Low focus, you can probably go for longer periods of time because you're not tiring your, your brain out because it's low focus. Yeah, I like that distinction. Um, yeah, so for our listeners, it's not like we're doing this for every single task. It's as you said at the start, Probably those times we are wanting to be in high focus, so that'll be different for everybody. It's likely to be, you know, creativity or working on the business, coming up with plans. Maybe it's doing certain elements of client work, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's probably about identifying uh, when you're doing a high value or a high focus task and then being very conscious about breaking that up into even smaller blocks then because a lot of people would naturally break break things up into hours you know a lot of people like to think we'll do hour-long sprints so this sounds like not even it's an hour it's 15 to 20 minutes short 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 break do it again do it again so i'd encourage all of our listeners to experiment with these two very simple but very powerful tactics do they is there any link between the two um, as a bit of a summary for this episode ash um or anything else we've missed Oh, there 100% is, James. This is about managing your energy, right? Which is linked to showing up uh, as your best self, right? So it's an obvious, I hope it's obvious that we, we are our best self when our energy is full and focused, right? But we can't be like that the whole time. No one can be. And if they are, they're pretending to be, right? No one's like that. So these are linked, right? The magic minute, that's about managing your energy so you don't blow it all out the back door worrying about something that's coming up and then you bring low energy and worries and troubles of the world to an important call. Manage your energy in a way that you can focus it at the time. So that's number one. Number two, the fart lick is also about managing your energy. Don't expend more energy than you've got focused on something. Give yourself permission to have short breaks, to gather your breath, refresh your mind, and then go back. So that they are connected directly around managing energy. I love it. And uh, as a bit of a fun, uh, fun fact for listeners, you know, well, it's interesting. These episodes are 15, 20 odd minutes, uh, you know, right in your sweet spot there, Ash, probably in mine as well. We do them at times of the week and times of the day that we're both in. You know, it's not early in the morning. I don't do early mornings, uh, usually after lunch. So uh, before three o'clock. So yeah, we're, we're working to our strengths. So uh, I love these and I hope that our listeners take some of these on board and uh, let us know how you go with them. That's what we're here for. Yeah, give them, a go. give them a go, guys. Give them a go. Like anything, you know, it might be a little bit clunky when you start, but they 100% work. Um, and if you end up working with us, this is something that, you know, we, we certainly bake into the way that we work with our clients is to help teach you how to be productive, build a great business, be the best version of yourself, manage your energy around all of that, right? It's not just possible, it's vital that you do that. Yep. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. 100%. Get more done with less. Love it. Well, team, uh, we'll leave it there. That's uh, that's. Uh, Magic Minute, Mental Fart Lake World. We're talking about productivity hacks this month. If you didn't listen to last uh, week's episode on the energy map, these link very closely together. And what we've got coming up for you next week uh, goes a little bit deeper again too. So uh, I'm looking forward to that episode next week, Ash. And uh, listeners, I guess we will see you then. But until then, stay cool. Yep, love this one, James. I'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.